Hello everyone and welcome to the Kukuli Bushcraft channel. Okay, so the subject of this video is this knife. Uh, so these are really cheap and as if you're after a heavy duty hard use bushcraft knife but you don't want to pay 100, 200 euros, dollars or pounds whatever currency these are really cheap so this is the Bajo curved recce knife uh, so there's a there's a version uh, with a chisel uh, a chisel knife basically which I used for years and years and years and it was fantastic it did really really well I've tried other chisel knives and I've never, I've never had a Mora one. I've had Halters Fours and a couple of lesser known brands. Uh, the Baco one really blew them all out of the water. So this is the same, only it's a knife. So it's got a stick tang that comes to about here. And it's pretty thick and substantial. Uh, so I'm not going to cut the knife open to show you. But as if you're interested... Uh, there's there's pictures on the internet of these that have had the handle removed and yeah pretty substantial nice thick blade with a high scandy grind uh, so yeah something that a lot of manufacturers seem to miss <laughs> is it's all about the angle <laughs> if you make the knife thicker the grind has to be higher uh, so I've been taking this into work quite a lot. I've not actually done that much in the way of bushcraft with it. Uh, so I'm going to be testing it out a little bit and see as if it is a viable option. But for the steel, it seems to be good. Uh, it holds its edge pretty well. It sharpens okay. It's comfortable enough in the hand. Uh, and as if you've got big hands, this will be excellent because it's it's got a nice big handle, uh, which also means you can hold it back here should you want to maybe remove a small branch. So what I've got here is a load of pre-split birch bark, and what I'm going to do is break it down a little bit more just to make some kindling and some feather sticks. Okay. Let's find a nice one as a baton. Okay, so both the camera and the wood, they're both on a wooden floor. So you might get quite a substantial amount of vibration. So that looks like quite a nice straight, straight piece. Yeah. Let's try and feather that one. Let's see if I can tilt you down a little. There we go. Okay, so let's compare that to a much more expensive little knife, which is the Piku CC. Okay. 
And is there a massive amount of difference? Not really. So we've got, what's that? Looks like just over four inches blade. Looks like, I'd say that was a smidge over four millimeters. So yeah, it's a, it's a good size. And I'd say, making lots of noise there in the background I'd say it's a really good budget option I think this cost me about 30 euros it was maybe about a year ago so one of my subscribers actually mentioned it to me and uh, said I should do a review of it and uh, yeah so they're not very easy to find in Finland but I found one I took it to work and I actually left it at a friend's house for <laughs> a few months. Uh, which brings me to the biggest issue with this. The biggest downside. I've complained about these kind of clips before. But this is a particularly bad one. And every time you sit down, this pops off your, sh this pops off your belt. It's, uh, I don't like these Mora style belt clips. They're perfectly fine as if you just keep your knife in your backpack and uh, just put it on your belt when it's in use. But for carrying around all day, it's just dangerous. You risk losing your knife. Uh, so we've got a thumb ramp on both sides. But <laughs> it's not really ambidextrous. Uh, unlike the chisel knife, which I which I think is, uh, yeah. So the actual retention is really good. So <laughs> you're not going to lose just the knife. <laughs> you're going to lose both the knife and the sheath. <laughs> so what I've done with these belt clips in the past is put a little kind of nail rivet in the it's uh that works fine uh you could also maybe glue it or something uh or <laughs> or a, a small bolt you could uh yeah cut it off there and attach a piece of leather you know the the options are endless you could uh, drill a hole through there put a bit of paracord there uh, there's lots of options oh you could just remove the handle entirely and uh, make a nice wooden one yeah, so you've got that rubberized texture there it's actually really really grippy uh, yeah there's no hot spots it's uh, you could uh, get a far wor worse knife for a lot of money, <laughs> at least a lot more money. Let's try a bit of finer work. So this is a lump of cherry wood, which is going to be a spoon. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit dry. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, so that's very, very hard wood. Very hard wood for me. Being here in the land of pine and okay, so that's making use of the grain, taking quite a big lump off. So this really isn't a very fair comparison. The the big is 
three, four times the price. And obviously a lot more suited, a lot more suited to detail carving. Like little areas like this. But I'm sure for making notches and things of that nature, that this will be perfectly fine. The comfort in the hand of the Piku CC for this kind of task is much, much better. But I wouldn't like to batten through all of this stuff with it. Okay, so that was a fail, but these things generally come with their own little scrapers anyway, but if you want to scrape fat wood as well, you won't be able to do it very well with the back of the knife. Okay, so to sum up, uh, this little knife will do everything that you need a bushcraft knife to do. Once you grind down that spine a little bit, just the sharp spine's all it's missing. Uh, it's really cheap. The sheath is, to my mind, junk. But yeah, 30 euros or so, 20, 30 euros. I don't remember exactly. But yeah, thank you very much for watching everybody. Please give us a thumbs up, drop us a comment and I'll see you all again soon for another Kookily Bushcraft video. Bye for now.